Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's catch some queens and we're going to be using a little bit of a different system here. This is the polystyrene box from Blue Sky Bee Supply. And I have caught already queens once out of this. At the end of the video, I'm going to have another um, totally different clip from when the cells were dropped into here so you can kind of see where I place them and just a couple other nuances about um, why I do what I do and for better or for worse. But last tank I got 50% to come back and the one that had two frames of brood with the queen I took a frame and placed it over here and they've equalized out pretty well and then I dropped two more cells which will be at the end of this video and now it has been oh goodness probably 20 days since then give or take and we're going to catch the queens because I have several splits that I need to put some mated queens into so we've got some brood here. There's just bee bread all up in here and there's honey. You can see the, the cell and the queen uh, JZBZ cup. There's a little bit of a flow today. I mean, not nothing like nectar flow, but there's pollen coming in and probably a tiny bit of nectar, but we will take it for sure. All right catch these queens and mark them. I really like to keep track of the ages if possible. I think it really helps me know what's going on. Oh, there she is right there. They've started drawing this out a little bit. You can see larvae down in there. Alright, now I'm going to catch her carefully. This is the worst part about a frame like this is many times there's so many corners. Come here you. I need to put this frame down. Alright. So I got her. I'm going to stick this back in there. And then I've got another fr foundation frame that belongs over here. And drop that side down. Now I'm going to grab her by the thorax. Some people grab by the wings. And where's the marker? I think it's is this it. Nope, queen cage. Well, shucks. I had a second ago. There it is. One of those pockets. The main thing is you just don't want to get the antennae or the eyes. So I like to angle it from the back. And there we have it. And you can blow on it just a little bit. Alright. Ah, snap. Alright, so that's one queen right there. Laura, I'm going to give that to you. Congratulations. Alright, let's go and see if we can find this one. They've really fattened this out over here instead of drawing the foundation out very good on the other side. There she is. They both came from the same lines. Look at the larvae and brood that she's placing down in here. The other frame has a lot of capped brood in it. And for my own personal use, this is exactly what I want to see. I like to let them lay for, you know, fill up about two frames worth. That way they, uh, I can see what's going on. I also feel like they do better than just yanking them real early. Oh, there, yep, there she is. Thank you. Alright, so, only got her by one wing. When you get her by two wings, it's no problem, but I like to, I don't like to hold them very long when I like that. There we go. This one's strong. It's pushing hard. Been talking too much. The pins are drying out on me. You definitely don't want to push that pin down. Alright, so now we've got two brand new queens that have their whole life ahead of them. This is awesome. And 
And this right here, this, this material, this polystyrene, has eight times the R value of a wood box or a wood nuke. And so that really helps these colonies maintain the temperature. Right now we're in summer, or very close to summer, just a handful of days away. But we're in the 90s, and it's easy for the bees to keep things warm. It's not getting that cold of a night, but during your early parts of the season, late in the season, that's where I think these things shine the most. And also, it still helps. I mean, um, it helps keep them cool on those really hot summer days. I've noticed a difference. It also has a screen down here at the bottom. You can see this little divider right here, and it's worked really good. Get on down in there. There we go. All right, so we have some virgin queens. About three or four of them this morning came on out, got, got ahead of me. I went ahead and marked them already. So, it's funny. Any other time, besides when you're doing a video, they, they come rushing out too fast and you're frustrated. And during the video, you can't get them to come out at all, it seems like. Now, one thing I kind of like to do, there, there she goes. Just kind of just let her walk on down. A couple of the bees are feeding her down there. Just gonna let this one walk on out. Come on now. So there's that one there, that one here, and these bees are, you know, wondering what's going on, new queens, but they'll figure it out. A lot depends on the hive and the conditions and the age, especially the age of the bees inside the hive. These bees are healthy, they're young, the colony is not very strong. So just drop the virgins in like that. Some people run them in the entrances, some people dip them in honey before they chuck them in. There's a lot of different opinions out there. I just, I prefer cells. That's my favorite way of doing it. But this, uh, this system's worked really good. And, and thanks again Blue Sky, to Blue Sky Bee Supply for donating this to our channel so that we could uh, show you all how it worked. I've been really impressed um, with how the bees did, especially back in April with this thing. And they just, well, I mean, other nukes that didn't have the insulation didn't build up as quick and you know it's it's one hive so you know it's not like a scientific definitive test but at the same time I, I the eyeball test gave me the impression it did a very good job and the bees have done very good and here we go round three hopefully we'll get two out of two just like we did last time so we're back to checking queens and I've got to get this hive off the ground I keep mowing and getting grass all over it we just moved 16 colonies out of here. I have about that many more to move out. We'll be back down to about 40 in this bee yard. Thank goodness. Too many here around the house. Uh, just you know, run around. There's just you look around. There's bees everywhere. And uh, 40 hives is still a lot for one location. But anyways, we're raising queens and making splits. And as we make the splits, we move them on out of here. It's just so easy to do the queen rearing and a lot of stuff right there at the house, you know. So let's get in and see if we have any queens come back on those two versions that we introduced in the um, first part of this video. We got our feeder up here. I'm just not used to the polystyrene. It's uh, definitely very insulative for sure. You can definitely tell that the bees don't want a beard as much. Well. Somebody's been busy working and somebody forgot to put a frame back. <laughs> Whoops. Well, that's the sign of a, a good hive right there, especially in July, goodness. And we're gonna lean that over here. Make sure that the queens aren't up top because the last thing we want is it going to the other side and getting killed by the other hive. Whoops. I was going to cut that out anyways. Yeah, I'll just shake that off and put that away. Alright, so hive number one. As Jimmy says, we want a winner winner chicken dinner. Oh, there she is. The version came back. 
And there she is, a little bit of the blue paint left towards the bottom of the frame. Boy, that's awesome. Well, I tell you, I've raised a lot of queens, and the feeling never gets old. I never mind finding a new queen and seeing her lay for the first time. It's awesome. Very, very awesome. All right, so, well, I'll just put that back then. What I'm going to do is I've got some drawn combs. I'm just going to stick a drawn comb over there. And that'll take care of that. So come on, let's get 100% here. How about that? Scoot these over just a tad. You know, in insulative hives, especially on little mating nukes or little nukes or just anything that's little, make a big difference. It helps every colony, I'm sure, but especially on little ones that just have a lot going against them. Every little bit of positive help for them, is, it just makes a difference. And they're just not having to work so hard to cool this down in the summertime. And in cooler weather, they're not going to work so hard to, to warm the brood up. Alright, what do we got over here? We got anything? Oh, there she is. I see her on the next frame over. Woo! Breaks my heart, tell you. You know that one that we have on the other side of the shed that um, I caught three out of, did that long video, three. Um, <laughs> goodness, doing a three stooges there. Um, curly. Uh, anyway, so we got three. The next round we caught three, and now I put in another round. I need to check here in the next few days, and I'm hoping to get three again. Uh, getting that good of takes constantly, it happens from, you know, sometimes, but I wouldn't expect it on a regular basis. Wow, this one's a lot darker. It's funny because they came from the same uh, queen and everything, but it just goes to show you the, how much genetic diversity there is within bees. And we really don't go for collar. We go for behavior, gentle behavior, colony buildup, queen longevity. Don't want to see any brood diseases. It's not like we ever see, we don't ever see anything. I saw some European fowl brood this spring with all that crazy cool wet weather. I saw more of it than I usually do, but it went away as soon as the weather got a little bit better. That kind of stuff, it's kind of like, you know, getting a cold or something for the colony. As long as they're able to clean it up, I consider that good behavior on the bees part. Now, if it persisted for months or something like that, those genetics have to go. Mm -hmm. Some bees just can't get healthy. Wow, all right, so we have two great mated queens here. The nutrition looks pretty good. Now these queens just started laying. I'd say they've been laying, looking at some of the larvae down in there. Maybe five days. Maybe a little bit more, but not much, which that's kind of what I plan. I plan to come back and check the queens after they've been laying for a handful of days. And that way, they're everybody's happy. Bees love a good laying queen. Now, even if she's capable of laying, you introduce her in a cage, and she's not laying, she has the potential to do it, but she's not actively laying, they, they treat her different. But when that queen's going around and she's laying eggs, man, they just love her to death. All right, well, two more queens. Thanks for watching the videos, and uh, let me know how your queen mating are doing this year.